What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at Obi Walker. He is to your left. And the reason why I have Elmer Violent Ray to your right is because these men fought one another 13 times. That's remarkable. I want to take a look at those fights. But first, let's have an understanding of Obi Walker, who he was, and what his accomplishments were. You see, Obi Walker was a colored heavyweight champion when he defeated George Godfrey, October 9th, 1933, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He defeated him in 10 rounds. Now, he would lose that colored heavyweight championship belt to Larry Gans, July 20th, 1935. But within that time frame, he would have matches with fighters such as two-ton Tony Galento. As a matter of fact, word was out that the Black Yulin, Max Mellon, avoided Obi Walker. Now, he was born September 19th, 1911 in Atlanta, Georgia. His birthplace was Cochran, Georgia. He died May 23rd, 1989. He was 77 years of age at the time of his death. I had the pleasure of meeting Obi Walker. Had a fighting career record of 121 total bouts. 93 wins. 18 losses. That's amazing. He was never stopped and had 11 draws. He would face fighters such as Willie Reddish. I spoke about him several times. He was a Philadelphia light heavyweight heavyweight fighter. Remarkable fighter was Willie Reddish. He would face Jack Tremaine. I talked about him. Jack Thompson. Many magnificent fighters during his day. He was avoided by many men, including the Black Yulin former heavyweight champion, Max Schmeling. And he would defeat such men as a former colored heavyweight champion, George Godfrey. Now, George Godfrey stood six foot one inch. He had a 79 and a half inch reach. Had a fighting career record of 126 fights himself. 99 wins, 21 losses, and 81 by the knockout rule. He was a remarkable fighter. George Garfield. Now, Obi Walker would be in the ring with Canadians Leroy Haynes, fought him three times. New Jersey's heavyweight contender, who faced a brown bomb in 1939, Joe Lewis, two-ton Tony Galento. And two-ton Tony Galento, although heavy in stature, but he could fight, he could punch. He dropped Joe Lewis. And he was knocked out himself in the fourth round. But he fought Max Baer and many others during his day. Lou Nova. So Tony Galento was some fighter out of New Jersey. Elmer Violet Ray was an amazing fighter. He'd be in the ring with Obi Walker 13 times. And Obi Walker began boxing Friday. February 15th, 1929. It was at the Municipal Auditorium, Atlanta, Georgia. Four-round victory over battling Cornell. As a matter of fact, he fought battling Cornell three times in a row. He would face Al Walker two separate occasions, April 9th and April 24th. And he would even fight him one more time, March 11th. 
Now, Al Walker was the colored heavyweight champion as well. But January 19th, 1937, and January 26th, 1937. Second Avenue Arena, Miami, Florida. Obi Walker would get a one victory and one draw over Elmer Violin Ray. That would start off the series. He would face on March 18th, 1937 and March 25th, 1937, as well as March 20th, 1937. Johnson St. Arena, Daytona Beach, Florida. Lincoln Park Arena, West Palm Beach, Florida. And Northwest 2nd Avenue Arena, Miami, Florida. One draw, one win, and one no contest. We fight him on a Wednesday night, March 27th, 1938. City Park Arena, Miami, Florida. He would get a victory. Thursday, September 15th, 1938. Monday, October 3rd, 1938. Township Arena, Auditorium. That would be in Columbia. Warren Arena, Atlanta, Georgia. We would receive a 10-round victory and a one-round TKO, six rounds. March 13th, 1939, December 4th, 1939. City Auditorium, Township Auditorium, one round. He would lose two separate occasions on a Monday night and a Thursday night. Monday, December 4th, 1939, Township Auditorium, Columbia. He would lose. Monday, March 1st, 1940, Tinkerfield Auditorium in Orlando, Florida. He would lose in 10 rounds. Tuesday, June 24th, 1941, City Auditorium, Galveston, Texas. He would lose in 10 rounds. He would have one more fight after that, and he would call it quits. But think of his record, 121 total bouts, 93 wins, 18 losses. And he was remarkable because Elmer Ray had 19 straight knockouts during the course of his career. And Elmer Violent Ray was an avoided fighter. Obi Walker as I stated, would face George Godfrey. He would face Al Walker. Be in the ring with Willie Reddish and Jack Trammell, Jack Thompson, two-ton Tony Galento. Some fighter Obi Walker was. It's important to me that I expose Obi Walker to you. He's an underrated fighter. That will never be forgotten right here on a Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Thanks for hanging in there with me, Scrapbook Boxing. Take a look at these fighters and understand the time in which they came, what they went through, the opportunities they did not have. What fights they were supposed to pull off and what fights they were not. If you knew a little bit about the training methods, the gymnasiums, the trainers, the lifestyle, do a little bit of research. And you'll probably, like myself, appreciate these fighters a little more. Very good fighters. Obi Walker, Elmer Violet Ray, George Godfrey, Al Walker, Leroy Haynes, Larry Gans. Wow, what a group of names. Here's Al Walker. He faced Al Gaynor. And Al Gaynor would take the Colored Heavyweight Championship belt from Obi Walker.
I want to stand corrected. I always get these two names confused. Larry Gans took the colored heavyweight championship belt from Obi Walker. This is Larry Gans. Al Gaynor did not. It was Larry Gans, so please accept my correction. He would become the colored heavyweight champion when he defeated Obi Walker. Here you have two-turn Tony Galento out of New Jersey. Mixed it up with Obi Walker. So thanks for hanging there with me. Scrapper Box and Museum of the Forgotten Fist of the Series. All great fights and all great fighters never be forgotten on my channel. This is Elmer Violent Ray. This 13 fight series with the incredible Obi Walker. Salute.